of your screen, you should see a little character over here. And you click it and move it around. So it's just a super fun little um, basically an engagement tool. People should just kind of be interested in what is that? How does it work? You can see it navigate on your screen. Around your so again, he's going to be our main character for the day. We're going to do something I've never done before this year, to be honest with you. It is a silent video. I first came across it actually with um, one of our speakers, Ruth Sensius Ferris, of something called a silent video. So really quickly, I'm going to pull that video up. But the big thing is about silent videos. One, they need to be something animated, something the kids are kind of interested in, that kind of thing. Short, so you don't want a 10 minute long silence because we all know kids can't stay silent for 10 minutes showing some concept in some dynamic way. So there's movement and that kind of thing without any spoken language and focused on one main concept. So the video we're gonna be looking at today is just the NASA interior animation. So this is what they thought it would look like. And it's very true to what it did turn out as. But what I want you to be thinking about right now is this see, think, wonder framework I'm sure many of us are familiar with. So we know this routine encourages students to one, make really careful observations of what they're looking at but two, to make really thoughtful interpretations of their media. So what are they actually watching? We're not just listening throughout it and we're not just waiting for the teacher to explain what the video just talked about at the very end. So it really helps stimulate that curiosity that our speaker talked about earlier this morning and it sets the stage for inquiry. So see, think, and wonder. So in case you've never seen that framework, what you see is just what you see in the video. So what do you notice as you're watching? Your think is what do you think is going on? So how does it work? You're kind of pulling in your prior knowledge and then what you're wondering. So what does it make you wonder about? So how does it work? Things like that. So let me get that video queued up for us. So these are just things you're thinking about and then Tara's going to make some notes for us at the back of the room. robot that dropped off a baby robot. Okay, that's a good scene. You see a baby robot that dropped off of another baby robot. Hmm. And you can just throw these out and say she's ready. Just whatever you are. So things you're seeing, thinking, and wondering. I wonder why it has two sets of blades. How does it transmit data back to us? I don't have those services. That the signal has to be in line with the first program. With the first program. Yeah. Okay, so that's 
before him then. What do you think about that silent video? Something completely different I've never seen before this year. Like I said, I went to a guest speaker and they had us do this. It's like, huh, this is pretty cool. So yeah, I just think it's really neat in that it encourages your students to watch the video. So often we're trying to take notes on what the speaker's saying and things like that. We're not focused on what it's actually trying to show us. I think it's a super fun um, just little technique you can use. So Karen, show out some of our signal wonders. What did we come up with? Okay, so if I missed anyone, I apologize. <laughs> but uh, most of the things I heard that we saw, um, that there was a robot that dropped off a baby robot. Um, the robot, the little helicopter, we saw two sets of lights, saw the dust flying. Um, I heard some people say, I think it has to be light, weight, um, and I think it's taking pictures. And then you always had a lot more wonders. Um, why are there two sets of blades? Uh, how big is it? How is it powered? How far can it fly? Who is in control of it? How does it transmit data? And does the signal have to be in line with the first rover? And while I just want to say the silent video is like I've never used before, I haven't seen it before, but I think just not having the sound and having your all's conversation be the highlight during the video, like you could actually think out loud while you were watching it was really interesting to hear your comments in that moment rather than you just taking the notes and so that was just observation mode. <laughs> All right, so you want to be focused on this ingenuity helicopter today. You're going to try your hand at building your own. So you're going to be engineers today. You're going to be engineering your own helicopter. I'll hand some materials out to you because we want you to try it first and then we're going to look at how we can apply that in your science classroom, in your math classroom and really start to integrate those concepts together. Um, so while Sarah is handing some things out, I just want to talk you through the basics. Um, so again, while we've been involved with the Endeavor coursework, we came across a really awesome engineering design process poster. And I think about, if you Google it, there are thousands that pop up on your image search. But what I love about NASA is that it's so simple. I work with a wide variety of students, from the itty bitties, so the second and third graders, all the way up to governor scholars. And I want something that they can all understand and connect with. So the process that they have you work through we start with asking, so we have some problem. So the problem with this is that there can be multiple problems. So what we're gonna be looking at in particular today is looking at the impact of mass on how quickly the helicopter will fall, okay? But you can choose many different ones, and I'll go over those with you a bit later. We start by asking a question. After that, we imagine what our helicopter could look like. So while we have this template that usually I'll start my students off with, after that, they get to get creative. So will they try maybe a different mass for their helicopter? Will they try a different material? And things like that. So they really get to kind of get creative with that. They plan it out, create their helicopter, and then they're going to experiment with it. And that's what you get to do today. So to walk you through how it works, and you drive a template myself, you're going to start by cutting along those outside dotted line edges where it has little scissors, okay? So you're going to come around that rectangle, cut on all the dash lines and fold on those that are solid, okay? So I'll give you just a minute to do that. You can test this around and make sure it's all down. Thank you. So if you scan that QR code, that's how you get to the NASA JPL website. Cool thing is about their resources, they have an educator's guide, so it shows you some videos that you can use. So that's where the video that I used for that silent video we just did, where that video came from. Uh, it talks through some different conversation ideas, things like that you can do with your students. There's also a student view. So I've left whole NASA JPL activities for subs simply based off that student guide. Usually it's a PDF, you can print it out, uh, things like that. It's super, super neat because lots of resources there. So this goes to the helicopter page. So then you're going to cut along the dotted lines, all along the side.
the body, the eggs in the body, fold it in toward the body, and then the needle folds up at the end to kind of hold those together. students can cut along lines, they can do this activity all the way to adults who can really get into engineering side of this. So um, once you've got your helicopter made, I want everybody to stand up. This is where I get really dramatic with my kids. I'll stand up in chairs, I'll go up on the highest ledge that I can to do this. So we're just going to stand and take a bit of the chair and thing. You know, hold it up. And what I always tell my kids is hold it by the T. So the base kind of looks like a T. It's got the bar across the top and the bar down the middle. Hold it by the corner of a T and hold it up above your head as high as you can hold it and let it drop. Hmm. Some of us had really effective helicopters and others not so much. So that's what we're going to be looking at is how can we engineer these helicopters to make them fall the slowest. Okay. And again, that's the key. We want to give our students an achievable challenge. They want to have something they're working toward that we can collect data and analyze it in order to make those choices. So again, you can try folding some things on your helicopter if you'd like to, and that's where I'm going to give my students time to do that. But if you want to return your seats really quick, I'll talk you through a couple of things that I investigate with my students. Two big ones in my science classes, one more physics related, so that's looking at potential energy. So I will change the mass of my helicopter or change the wing length. Uh, so how I do that, mass is going to be related to paper. <coughs> so how much does a paper clip Way. Like, what is it? 47. Back to this one. Oh, it's about grand. Yeah. So, think about we all have a consistent helicopter, right? If we cut along the lines, all of our helicopters weigh approximately the same amount. So, we can change the mass simply by adding paper clips to the base. Yeah. So, you can change the mass of your helicopter by adding mass to the base. So, I'm just adding one. After that, you can start to chain them on there and that kind of thing to add additional mass. Yeah, so that's one way you can do it. Another way is to change the wing length. So we have the opportunity you can do that later today. How I do that is just a little bit of tape and you extend the length of your wings. The options are truly limitless. So what are some that you all can think of? What are some other ways we could modify our helicopters in order to make them fall more slowly? Could you like fold the wings to create drag or something? Okay, so could we fold the wings? That's a good option, yeah. What are some other things we could do? What did you see your students doing trying to do this? Okay, so cutting the base, maybe adding some kind of frills to it, okay? Something my students have done is they maybe like split the wings in half and things like that. Yeah, you think about your working with papers, the options truly are limitless here. Those are my two best ones that I've done um, in my classroom. We also talked about how you can just use different materials because as when we were putting together these presentations, First, I've never done this one in my classroom, and now we're two teachers. Um, but I was running the experiment to collect data and see what I would do as a math teacher with the data once I got it. And so, you know, I was debating would that should be cardstock, should I use regular paper? And you know, that's something else you have your students investigate the paper weight and how it affects the slide um, Absolutely. Something I usually have my students do, especially those that are in high school, is they'll be working in small groups, and perhaps your group would just be looking at or perhaps yours would just be looking at wing length. And you're going to graph it out because you're going to try later today. But we would be using the different data that each group collected in order to build the best helicopter. And to me, that's a true example of engineering in that you're using different pieces of data kind of to sort it out and choose which one you're going to kind of follow in order to investigate that route and go down that route. So, you want to talk through those or you want to tell them? Okay, I think it would be really exciting. So again, what we're going to look at today is just mass. So if you will, move to a partner if you don't have one currently. Okay? So move to sit with somebody. So we're going to bring some chart paper around to you. That's fine. That's how that works. And make sure to take your paper clips with you as well because we're going to investigate the effect of mass on the fall time of these helicopters. Okay? So you're going to be collecting your data. 
using just your smartphone. Time, super simple. Mm -hmm. You can be graphing out that data just like you might have a student do. Drop height so that you use it consistent. We've got some little you know, tape moving here that we can. Okay. If you want to use like a mark on the wall, so that you can tell you the Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to put it over here. Yeah. Do you want to make it But okay. what we're going to be looking at is the impact of no, adding changing it. Yeah. So we yeah. 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 Okay. So you want us to start it regular and then add bigger bits. Make sure we do the right Okay. So remember, we do the challenge. We do the You're looking at the impact of adding paper clips on your holographers. The impact of mass on your descent time. What will you have on your X and Y axis? I'm going to have to. That's what I'm going to have to.